Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, my study focuses on the Banyamwenge community in the Eastern, in the Eastern Congo, Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, but at the same time, uh, I made sure to focus on the general issue of Banyamwenge uh, longstanding violence in the Democratic Republic of Congo for history uh, since their origin and, and trying to assess the steps along the continuum of destruction since 90s and 60s, uh, which also bring issues of ethnic cleansing and uh, almost total extermination. Uh, by starting with the, the two, my topic is the ongoing genocide against the Banyamurang ethnic group in Eastern Congo. Uh, I first went through the history of Banyamurang as it's, uh, it's known by scholars and uh, in the high history that they are, they, this is a, a, an ethnic minority group uh, which is settled in, in the territories of peace for a long time, even before the partition of the colony uh, between the 80s and 90s centuries. But because of uh, the problem of school, I mean, some scholars didn't record the exact time that there is still confusion to, to know the, the exact period. But despite what is being written, uh, that the Banyamurenge came from Burundi and, uh, and Rwanda, they declared themselves to be Congolese citizens. First thing, uh, long-term violence and ethnic cleansing since the 1960s, Banyamurenge had uh, managed to live with those ethnic groups, neighbors who are uh, Bamembe, Bafuero, and Banyintu. Uh, according to the mapping report, uh, uh, which was focused uh, on the human rights violation in the Eastern Congo and in, in general targeting the minorities, it says that since the arrival of the, Banya, the Rwandan refugees uh, in the aftermath of 1994 genocide in Rwanda and some Burundi, you know, in Burundi also was these massacres against the Hutu. Uh, this has increased the tension against uh, Banyamurenge in Congo, and which made some, caused some uh, Banyamurenge youth uh, to join the Rwandan Patriarchal Army as a means of self-defense. Uh, and you know, later uh, they have joined and by joining this uh, rebellious and army, it helped them to, to secure their resistance in the Democratic Republic of Congo. But the main issue is citizen, citizenship question, uh, which they were granted through uh, the Congolese in the 1980s by, under the regime of Mabudu Sesese. But even this uh, constitution, which recognized whoever was, uh, was in Congo uh, before the colonial period, before 1950s, still the Congolese reject the citizenship the Wanyamurenge, see some, uh, some decrees like this one, 1995, the Franzian Parliament rejected the Wanyamurenge citizenship. Uh, some political leaders like uh, Celestine Anzuloni in 1991 also, he rejected calling them immigrants. Uh, and recently, uh, the president, the current president of Congo, uh, in one of the, the diaspora convention, Mentioned, he declared that Banyamurenga are Congolese, and you can imagine how a president of the country can declare that their citizens are, uh, I mean, are citizens, yet they are living in their homeland. You can put question mark that there is this issue of rejection. Uh, let me come back to the issue of violence against Banyamurenga, which is started since the 90s, uh, 90s, as I have mentioned. I said, uh, since the arrival of the, the Rwandan uh, refugees at the month of the 1994 genocide in Rwanda, this has increased uh, anti Banyamurenge tension. And we know there was this Terahamo militia who committed genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. They collaborated with the neighbors of Banyamurenge, who described themselves to be, uh, to be indigenous, to be the owners of the land. Then finally, they started fighting against the Banyamurenge. 
Uh, and that's the time again, more than Yamringa youth had, they fled to Rwanda where they joined this militia group. But the main purpose was not to go to Rwanda because maybe they had this relationship as other Congolese compared. But that was a means of self-defense. They went and did trend. And along this continuum of violence, since 1996, uh, one of the organization of human rights uh, which was uh, was stopped by the government. Um, and some killings, 1996, uh, September, there was this demonstration uh, against the Banyamwenge, calling them the, uh, the refugees and immigrants. Uh, we know the hundreds of Banyamwenge were killed in Kabira. Also in 1996, uh, uh, women were gang raped and women also were killed in Baraka. I mean, when you bring more, more than 300 and women and the minors were gang raped. Uh, in also 1996, in September 29, with the aid of Force Army Zairaz, uh, in partnership, in collaboration with Ben Bam, the group, Almost uh, uh, 150 civilians were killed in Rueba, and uh, including women and children. In the night of uh, 29 and 30, 1996, Bembe Amdi group killed hundreds of Anyamurengi civilians in Boko, uh, and many women were gang raped. And I was reading this uh, uh, human rights uh, human uh, human rights watch report. Uh, of 2000, 2010, and they were talking about the disappearance of Banyamurengi children, more than 150, who were transferred from one ethnic group to another through these conflicts. They would kill their parents, then they would take kids in their ethnic group just to one of the, uh, the element of genocide, the crime of genocide. Atrocity crime in the Eastern Congo. Genocide. Uh, as uh, I quote uh, Kofoni Anan, who was one of the general, uh, one of the general uh, leader of the UN, he said, a genocide begins with the killing of one man, not for what he has done, because of who he is. The campaign of ethnic cleansing begins with one neighbor against, turning against another. As I quote uh, Evin Stabe in his, uh, his book, The Roots of Evil, at the origin of genocide and other uh, group violence in his book. He says genocide doesn't result direct. There is always a progression of actions. As the perpetrators uh, engage in less harmful acts, which cause changes in those individuals, and this makes the, the, war, uh, the war process uh, of harmful acts possible, and victims are devalued, and this will happen to the Wanyamurenge. This is my argument. My argument is that some politicians from the above mentioned ethnic group, uh, who are the neighbors of the Banyamurin, the Mafuero, Banyindu, and the Babembe, in this in Congo, had created this condition of outbreak of violence. And they have encouraged it in the first place since the 90s by mobilizing the ordinary people from the these neighbors of Banyamurin to participate in. And this was later followed by the formation of militia, which is involved in terrorizing and uh, killing the Wanyamurenge nowadays. Uh, and why would these politicians and these leaders use these ordinary people? Uh, using and benefiting from this militia commit crimes is one of the strategies of uh, perpetrators of genocide nowadays. And we see genocide is changing. Uh, Ani Fuji argues that social ties and immediate social context better explain the process through which ordinary people come to commit crime, murder, murder mass, I mean mass murder in Rwanda. Additionally, Thomas Fridge, who was working on the uh, 1941 pogrom in Poland in the Holocaust, it was almost the Holocaust. He says, he argues the majority of his and acts uh, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get my presentation here. Against the Jews during the Holocaust constitute a form of, um, of genocide from, from the above, as well as from abroad. And in this case of the 
Banyamurengi in Eastern Congo, uh, it's one of the crises which is coming from above, not from the local level. It's from Kinshasa, from official uh, senior leaders who are now leading Kinshasa by imposing their genocidal policies to the local community, then they get involved. So we don't see politicians taking guns to go fight against Banyamurengi. There's a local leader, the neighbors of Banyamurengi. In this context, the killing on the local level in the Eastern Congo took the level or the level of the genocide this is the way, the way it is today, because of my ethnic participation driven by Congolese politician. Uh, let me rush that over time. Uh, uh, a remarkable difference between 90s violence and the, what we see today in Congo is because the militia groups and some in, uh, in collaboration with the foreign militia groups, they don't only kill Banyamurenge, but they also want to cleanse them from their homeland. Uh, Danny Gon had in his uh, documentary for most of all, he argued that genocide and eliminations are planned and initiated by political leaders. Then they mobilize and organize the perpetrators. Without this context of low level perpetrators, uh, we never see genocide happen. In this point, we see my mind collaborating with these neighbors and foreigners, but they are first of all influenced by the top leaders from this. Uh, from this um, ethnic group. And since 90s and 60s, the Wanyamurang population continued to live under the state of um, Congolese politicians are considering the Wanyamurang action today. But analyzing this ongoing and the past violence against Wanyamurang, I argue that this indicated an intent to destroy, which is a, a crucial element of genocide. Uh, let me use, I wanna use this. Uh, uh, steps of continuing violence, which was the, uh, developed by Professor Evan Staub in uh, collaboration with the Labo Valencia. Uh, I don't know if you can see well, starting from increasing insecurity, which is like step one of every mass killings or genocide in general. Uh, he says, inc increase insecurity, economic, political, social. This is the start and of development of hostility, of hostility against the settlers. And in, in Eastern Congo, the Banyamurenge was first destroyed socially, politically, marginalized, economically, their properties, their house were burned down. The second in going, this group, they start turning around to ask for help, but still the political leaders, they find a way destroy them. Social polarization has kept going. When Yamlenge was, were taken as scapegoats since the 90s, calling them the, uh, the Rwandans, uh, the partners, the agents of Rwanda and Burundi. Uh, I mean like exclusion, discrimination step four, the outer group, they are devalued, discriminated, marginalized and demonized. And this will happen since 2019 until today when Yamurengi are not living in their homes. You can imagine this. Day by day, they don't sleep in their houses. Uh, you can imagine within a period of one year, 12 months, living outside, being demonized because they call you an outsider. The step five, the in-group increasing agrees with uh, and takes part in destructive ideology. The propaganda. This learning by doing helps people to change their moral frameworks to accommodate their need. Uh, six, absence of active bystanders. There is no bystanders. Even media is against the Wanyamurin. And even those uh, Nobel Prize, uh, we see this Dr. Mukwege, who is a Nobel Prize winner, is also against the Wanyamurin. Somebody who should be neutral, he's also acting against the Wanyamurin. Seven, uh, manipulation and propaganda, the media calling them. Uh, um, Alex talked about balkanization. They are calling Banyamurenge that they are the ones who now involved in, in the balkanization, which is wrong. Seven, uh, individual carrying out acts of violence with 
encouragement and unity. We have never seen the government of Rwanda uh, bring into trials either the Congolese kickstarters or those the leaders of those militia groups to trials for them committing crimes against the group. Nine, planned and organized persecution of violence. It's a planned violence. Who give those militia group materials? Who support them since 90s until today? And those are ignorant people. Even if you may ask them, why are they fighting against Panyamang? They will not explain. They won't say, we are killing because of this. Because they are just manipulated. They are being used. The last one is extreme insecurity, including what happened now. We are just waiting for the final examination, which I think will be maybe the final point. Crimes against humanity in Congo as defined in uh, Rome statute. I argue that the incident mentioned above uh, at targeting the Banyamwenge constitute a crime of genocide because the most civilian, I mean the civilian of Banyamwenge are being attacked. Crime of genocide as adopted by United uh, Nations General Assembly. Um, uh, this in article one, uh, the crime of genocide can either take place in armed conflict, international or non-international or in peaceful situation, but in Congo we see is taking place in terms of conflict, armed conflict. The genocide convention says can also be committed against, this is my point here. Um, it says genocide can be committed against a part of group, as long as that part of group is identifiable, including geographically limited area. This is a very interesting point. By analyzing the Eastern Congo situation until today, I found that these acts committed against the Manyamwenge group included or include three of prohibited acts which constitute a crime of genocide, as defined in Article 2 of, Gen of Genocide Convention. A killing, causing serious bodily or mental harm, inflicting conditions calculated to bring about the physical destruction of the group. Uh, I'm almost done. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know. Thank you. I'm sorry. All these crimes which have been committed by the Maimai militia group. Uh, and they say there is this specific intent to destroy this group. In, and uh, this, destroy this group in part is sufficient to constitute a crime of genocide. And we have seen this has been defined in one of the international courts during the Yugoslavia war. And which means a certain group of people be killed in a certain ge limited geographic area, not saying that over Nyamrengi in Congo, but a certain group of people can be killed in a certain geographic area. We see the case of Bosnia. When the my, my group targeted Nyamrengi using various, various means, killing, destroying their homes, raping, Again, raped uh, women with eliminating them is a clear proof of intent to destroy uh, this settlement. Intervention. Usually during the genocide, we expect political intervention, military intervention, or uh, in international community. But we don't see in this case of Anyamori, it's very different. I'm almost done, and I remain with one, one page. We, don't, we cannot. And the failure of the Congolese security forces and the presence of UN uh, peacekeepers, peacekeeping forces, or MONUSCO, or international community in general to stop this violence because they, they are aware of this violence, but they just don't care. Uh, in a report of Human Rights Watch in 2019, they say this Congolese government security forces, instead of restoring security in Eastern Congo, but they they are the ones who are supporting the violence for, for them to gain what mineral resources and other illegal business. Can you imagine those who are supposed to protect people? They are, they are just supporting those militia groups for their benefit. Then who will serve this money Murenge? Even the UN a Humanitarian Commission for Refugees don't even provide humanitarian aid to the civilians. 
who are living outside their homes. It is important to note that the National Criminal Court, based in Hague, Netherlands, is an appropriate court with jurisdiction to prosecute the crimes which are being put, uh, perpetrated in the Eastern Congo. I suggest that the UN Security Council should do their responsibility and refer this matter uh, to the ISIS after the failure of the Congolese government and its security force. Uh, finally, uh, as I conclude, the responsibility to protect is a political commitment ratified by uh, all members of the United Nations in one of their summit of five. And this responsibility to protect is concerned about the prevention of crime. In one of their program, uh, paragraph 1938, the document states that uh, the primary responsibility to protect their population, the states has decided to protect their countries and this test also prevent any incitement through all necessary means. And through the prevention process will not be achieved uh, where those crimes took place. And those members should be the country members. Whoever country members is part of this uh, human a declaration of universal, universal declaration of human rights or convention on genocide prevention, they should act. Congo is part of this treaties and convention, but there is no reaction. I suggest that the national community applies trade or military related sanctions against Congolese government until they stop the employment genocide. Finally, the Congolese governments need to reform or create an inclusive nationality policy, specifically aimed at destroying negative stereotypes of the Wanyamurenge and promoting and integrating them in a diverse Congolese life, such as government leadership, even though they are there, but in, not in a form of show and punish whoever targets the Banyamurenge in one way or another.